In the magical land of Kyria, an adorable baby named Ella of Frel was born. Her father, Peter, spent most of his time traveling and making money. Meanwhile, Ella's mother, Eleanor, and a household fairy named Mandy, took care of Ella since then. They let things float around the house to make chores easy. Ella lives with magic, thanks to Mandy and fairy godmothers who love her. A little while, Ella's mother and Mandy heard Lucinda. She is Ella's godmother and the fairy who gives the worst gifts. They rattled and hid Ella. Lucinda enthusiastically arrived and was finding her goddaughter. Ella's mother and guardian fairy stuttered trying to tell Lucinda that the baby is not around the house. However, the door creaks and slowly opened. There, Ella appeared hooked in the door. Lucinda was so happy to see the adorable baby. She immediately carried her but Ella cried loudly. Her loud noise made Lucinda decide to give her the gift of obedience. And voila, Ella stopped crying. Not only that, but when told to go to sleep, the baby also closes her eyes. Finally, when told to wake up, Ella wakes up. Lucinda was so happy but the Eleanor and Mandy were left terrified. They couldn't imagine Ella in the future following everything she's told to. They immediately instructed Lucinda to take back the gift. But the fairy threatened Ella's mother to transform her into a squirrel and take away the spell of youth given to Mandy. Because of that, Ella's mother and guardian fairy couldn't do anything but accept Lucinda's terrible gift. Lucinda told them that her gift would really transform lovely Ella to be a perfect child. Years passed and Ella grew up carrying the spell of Lucinda. The gift indeed made her an obedient and kind little girl as well. One time, a young girl was playing when a group of bullies teased her ugly name. They also pushed her to the ground. Seeing that the poor girl couldn't fight back, Ella saved her by biting the arms of the bully kid. From that day on, they became friends and Ella invited her to her birthday. On Ella's birthday, she realizes that her godmother's gift was a curse. After blowing out the cake that Ella nor prepared, Ella stuffed her face and ate the cake with all her might since her mother figuratively told her to fill her stomach. Ella's visitors including her friend couldn't help but laugh at Ella. Feeling humiliated, Ella talked to her mom and guardian fairy if they can take back the spell of being obedient. Mandy the guardian fairy told her that according to the fairy guidelines, the only one who can remove the spell is Lucinda, the fairy who gave her that gift. At that moment, Ella felt dismayed and accepted the fact that she would be different from other kids. In spite of her condition, Ella keeps trying to fight the spell her godmother gave. One time, Ella nor told her to practice playing mandolin. Ella, who enjoyed coloring a book tried to not follow her mother. Seeing that Ella was not obeying her, Ella's mother shouted. Even if it's out of her will, Ella's body rushed to play mandolin. Months passed and Ella still struggles to find a way out of the spell. She really has no control over it. Also, if there is a thing that is also inevitable to happen in her life, is her mother's death. Out of Ella's knowledge, her mother is suffering from an unknown illness and is bedridden. Eleanor was teary-eyed knowing that she'll leave Ella soon. Before she died, she requested Ella to never tell anyone about Lucinda's spell so that no one would use it against her. Immediately, the obedient Ella nodded, indicating that she keeps a promise to not tell anyone. Going back to when she was a baby, only Ella's mother and Mandy knew about the spell. They did not tell other people or her father. Lastly, Ella was reminded that at times when someone tells her to do things out of her will, just look at herself. Because what's inside is stronger than any spell. Ella's mother hardly breathed, but still managed to give her a silver necklace with a blue heart-shaped stone in the middle. Wearing the necklace will remind Ella that wherever she goes, her mother is right beside her. Years passed and Ella is now a smart, kind, and brave grown-up lady. Every day, she wears the necklace that her mom left for her. One day, Ella's guardian fairy suddenly called her to go downstairs because of urgent news that her father wants to tell. Her father is already married to a rich woman. She is Dame Olga, who has two daughters. Ella was shocked but as her father assured her, that Dame will be a great mother and that her daughters will be her friends, a smile was painted on the lady's face. The next day, a horse carriage arrived in front of their home. A blonde-haired woman in a black dress went out, together with her two daughters, Hattie and Olive. Hattie is the eldest with long blonde hair while Olive is her younger sister. Ella and her father happily welcomed them. Inside their home, Ella brought Dame Olga's daughters to their room. There, the girls acted so mean and didn't find the room elegant and spacious, to match their expensive dresses. They have instructed Ella to show them her room. Obedient Ella stood up and her body immediately turned to her room's direction. After seeing Ella's room, the girls decided to throw away Ella's dresses to make room for their clothes. Ella disagreed and went nearer to stop them. However, after the ladies told her to move away, Ella's body followed and moved steps backward. A little while, Hattie noticed Ella's necklace. It was so beautiful that it caught her attention. Afraid, Ella warned them to never touch it because it was her mom's gift. But Hattie insisted that she want to have the necklace. Ella responded no. Hard-headed Hattie continued to ask for the necklace. Observing Ella's facial expression, Hattie knew that she won't give the necklace. However, when Hattie told Ella to hand over the necklace, Ella couldn't control herself. Because of the spell, Ella obeyed and gave the necklace. Hattie was so shocked as well as her sister Olive. With an evil laugh, they teased Ella for being so accommodating to them. The next day, Ella's father needs to go to the town, far from their village for work. 
Because of that, he will be away from home for months. Peter bid his goodbyes to Ella and promised to return. Just after her father left, Ella's stepsisters call her Ella the Smella from Frella, and the two giggled after. Ella, on the other hand, never responded and just left them alone. At Frell Community College, Ella had a debate with Hattie about how the elves, giants, ogres, and humans existed in harmony before. Ella's argument was applauded by the teacher who told the lady to give herself a pat on the back. Ella couldn't control herself and followed her teacher. Her classmates and her stepsister, Hattie, laughed as Ella literally gave herself a pat on the back. It was now time for Hattie's argument so she went opposite to Ella's idea. Commotion arises as Ella tries to defend her argument. Meanwhile, Hattie acted like she never heard Ella. She also throws insults that Ella doesn't know anything and it's better to admit that she's stupid and doesn't know anything. For the second time, Ella couldn't control herself and told everyone that she's stupid. Humiliated, Ella tries to continue arguing by concluding her argument. Afraid that Ella will make sense, Hattie shouted at Ella to stop and hold her tongue. Ella's eyes were shocked as she finds herself holding her tongue. Everyone in the room laughed while Hattie looked surprised. From that day on, Hattie knew that there is something wrong with Ella. At Frell's village, a carriage passed by carrying King Regent, Edgar, and his nephew, Prince Charmant. They talked about attending a mall opening and the incoming coronation of Prince Char's heir to the throne. Edgar has a pet snake named Heston who also talks. Edgar reminded his nephew and instructs him on his responsibility as a public figure. This includes going out and interacting with other people to gain their trust. After a while, Prince Char arrives at the mall gallery of Freltown and leads the opening ceremony. There, hundreds of maidens including Ella and her stepsisters are anticipating his visit. The crowd cheered as Prince Char was introduced to everyone. Unlike the wild cheering ladies around her, Ella was just calm and even stared at the prince with disgust. She recalled the debate with Hattie where she argued that the prince's bloodline had been stealing the town of Frell to widen their kingdom's territory. She also believes that they are the reason why elves, ogres, and giants no longer exist in the town. No to Ogreside. Ella shouted as she also opens the banner she made. Hattie, her stepsister, who was madly in love with Prince Char, got mad and approached her. Hattie finds Ella embarrassing so she said to her that it's better to go home than start a commotion. Because of the spell, Ella said her goodbyes and rushed her way home. Meanwhile, at the mall, all of the girls went wild and couldn't hold the urge anymore to get near to the prince. They all rushed to go near Prince Charmant. The royal security got overwhelmed and couldn't control anymore the approaching crowd of ladies. As a consequence, Prince Char ran out of the mall to escape them and found himself in the forest. After minutes of running, Prince Char accidentally bumped Ella on her way home. The prince immediately offered his hand to Ella but she declines it. Ella also frankly said that she has no intention of curtsying the prince. Ella walks away and left the prince as if she only meets a normal guy in the town. Prince Charmant's ego was hurt knowing that there is a lady who didn't fall in love with his charm. He followed the disrespectful lady and ordered her to come back to him. As expected, Ella stopped and went near to the prince as she was told to do. Even if it's out of her will, Ella said her name to the prince after he asks her. He also told Ella that she's the first maiden he met, who hasn't gone wild meeting him. Ella again walks out while Prince Charmant follows her. The prince also explained to the lady that he never stole anyone's land or their livelihood, and clarified that he also want peace in the kingdom like anyone else. With what he said, Ella responded and assumed that the prince has other plans after getting the crown. Charmant stuttered and nodded yes saying to Ella that can't disclose his plans to anyone. From that, Ella concluded that he is really similar to all the previous greedy rulers. A little after arguing, Ella noticed that she lost her purse. Prince Charmant offered to help and told her that he'll find it. Ella just stayed on the pathway as ordered by the prince. Just after he left, Ella noticed an incoming carriage on the path she was standing. Ella couldn't run to avoid it. Ella screamed for help from the prince but Charmant did not respond. The carriage is fast approaching and all Ella could do is close her eyes and accept that she'll be hit by the carriage anytime. However, just as the vehicle passes, Prince Char rescued her by pushing away her body out of the carriage's path. Ella was shocked and couldn't believe she was still alive. On the other hand, the prince get mad at her and was concerned about why she didn't move away from the path. As Ella and the prince are about to get up, Ella's stepsisters were standing before them. Hattie scolded Ella for flirting with the prince, and humiliated her loudly by telling her that she should have been spending her time cleaning the house. Ella talked back but when Hattie shouted at her to go back to the mall, Ella immediately followed. The prince keeps calling Ella but Hattie stopped him and flirted. Prince Charm, on the other hand, had no interest in Hattie so he ran as fast as he could, and requested her to tell Ella he'll get in touch with her soon. Hearing that, Hattie was pissed off. At the mall, Ella's best friend, Arita, was concerned about where she went earlier. Ella shared that she was able to meet the prince but her stepsisters were also there. Arita keeps wondering why she always follows her brat sister's commands even if she doesn't want to. Ella never told her about the spell like how she promised her mother. Meanwhile, Hattie talked to Olive about the strange things she noticed with Ella, obeying everything she says. However, Hattie is still unsure about her speculation so she just set it aside. 
After strolling around the mall, Ella saw her stepsisters. She was trying to hide but Hattie saw her. There, Hattie commanded Ella to come closer. As expected, Ella walks nearer even if she doesn't want to. Ella just bit her tongue, nervous that her stepsisters may wonder why she's obedient. Ella was trying to be composed as much as she could. But Hattie tested out if she was correct on her speculation. Hattie told Ella to steal. Without hesitation, Ella puts some goods in her bag. Olive, on the other hand, was so surprised at how obedient Ella is. She also instructed Ella to steal the potion displayed right beside her. Ella immediately placed the potion smoothly inside her bag. Ella turned red and was so angry at everything that his stepsisters commanded. They were not contented and told Ella to also steal the glass shoes displayed outside a shop. Ella couldn't do anything. She faced Hattie and pleaded with her to stop but her body leads her to the rack where the shoes were placed. Hattie teased Ella that since she politely pleaded with her, she won't anymore instruct her to get the shoes. However, Hattie commanded her to take the shoes and run. As a response, Ella took the shoes and ran as fast as she could. The guards were following her. Ella had a hard time running around the mall as the shop owners request her to stop and try their products. Ella tries all the goods and the guards keep following her. Ella was trapped in a balcony. She looked behind her and saw the guards getting near to her. Ella outsmarted them by going down the floors through a cloth banner hung along the streets. Ella held the banner tightly and as the cloth tears, Ella goes down. Ella's stepsisters couldn't help but laugh at her who was so desperate to escape. Ella successfully landed on the streets. The guards and the crowd couldn't believe it. Ella ran but a barrel of wine was blocking her way. Ella decided to jump but the guards shouted at her to stop. People were left shocked as Ella freezes in the air, above the barrel of wine. The guards were so surprised and rattled. After seconds of confusion, a guard told Ella to put her hands together, and so Ella did. She also fell to the barrel of wine and was finally captured by the authorities. At home, Dame Olga, Ella's stepmother scolded her. She humiliated Ella in front of her stepsisters and called the incident as an embarrassment to their family. Mandy, guardian fairy of Ella interrupted, and saved Ella by telling Olga that someone may have made Ella do those things. Afraid to be caught by Mandy on what they did to Ella at the mall, Ella's stepsisters told their mom that Arita was the one to be blamed. Because of that, Dame Olga instructed Ella to never go near again to her best friend. Ella disagreed but still followed her stepmother's command. On the other hand, Arita rushed to Ella, concerned about her situation after the incident. Ella approached her and was teary-eyed. Arita just looked at her friend seriously until Ella uttered that she doesn't want to see her again. Arita laughed at Ella and thought that she was joking. Ella sobbed as she continued to let her best friend go by telling her that she doesn't want to befriend with an Iordian. Arita froze and tried to process everything she heard. She felt insulted by her best friend. Arita slowly stepped back and Ella cried while closing the door. Later that night, Ella was still crying reminiscing that since she was a child, the worst thing that she was told to do because of the spell is to keep away from her best friend. The gift of obedience given by her godmother Lucinda was a curse for her. Ella was shocked to see that Mandy was also lying in bed with her. Ella told the fairy that she desperately wants to find Lucinda to take back the curse. As Mandy saw Ella in tears pleading, her heart was touched, and helped Ella by giving her a book. In front of the book is a mirror where Mandy's boyfriend, Benny, is reflected. Not only that it contains all the information needed by Ella, but the book also shows real-time footage of Lucinda and what she's doing. However, the magic mirror cannot tell specifically where Lucinda is. Based on the magic mirror, Lucinda is holding a giant wedding registry. Mandy and Ella were still clueless about where the fairy could be, not until someone passed by behind Lucinda. It was a giant. Because of that, Mandy became sure that Lucinda is at Giantville. Ella's face was filled with joy after knowing Lucinda's location. She can finally request her godmother to take back the gift of obedience. Ella's moment was interrupted when Olga shouted. Her daughters suddenly won a bouquet of flowers in the middle of the night. As usual, Ella went out to pick it. Obedient Ella picked flowers but added an extra touch to the bouquets, vines of poison ivy plant. The next day, Olga and her daughters had rashes, extremely itchy rashes that they did not notice that Ella escaped. Ella wore her sky blue coat and headed to the forest. She also brought the book to serve as a guide on her journey. While walking, Ella asked Benny if he can show her a map of the forest of Pym. Benny agreed and the book opened. It revealed a three-dimensional map with landmarks, arrows, and icons to guide Ella. While the lady studies the map, an echoed voice bothered her. It was a voice of a man screaming for help. Ella searched for the voice and she found two people hurting an elf named Slannon. Unlike the elves described in storybooks, the elf that Ella saw was almost similar to her height. They tied him on a spinning wooden board, targeting him with a dart. Brave Ella punched the two men as instructed by the elf. She moves like an action star and successfully defeated the bad guys. Afraid of Ella, the men ran and escaped the scene. After that, Ella rushed to the wooden board and released Slannon. To give thanks for Ella's bravery, Slannon invited her for dinner at an elf restaurant. Ella agreed and followed him. At the entrance of the restaurant, an extravagant greeting of elves welcomed the two. A group of elves danced and sang harmoniously to a piece of joyful instrumental music. Slannon and Ella finally found a seat. For the second time, 
Another group of singers entertained Ella and Slannon. Ella enjoys them performing but Slannon doesn't. Unlike most of the elves who are destined to be singers and dancers as they grow old, Slannon wants to be a lawyer. However, no elf is allowed to take other occupations other than entertaining. Meanwhile, at Ella's home in Frell, an invitation letter for Ella was mailed. Since the lady was not home, Olga and her daughters were the ones who opened it. It was an invitation to the coronation ball. Olga ordered Hattie and Olive to prepare their most elegant dress for the incoming ball. Feeler Hattie daydreamed of getting married to Prince Char and screamed out of excitement. Going back to the woods, Slannon was fond of staring at Benny in the book while talking to Ella. There, they saw elf and singers picked up by soldiers to perform at the coronation. Only elf performers are allowed to enter the castle. Ella encouraged Slannon to go to Lamia to petition the king for his intention to be a lawyer. Lamia is on the way and going to Giantville where Ella is heading to. Slannon agreed after being teased by Benny for having little courage, like his height. On their way to Lamia, they met a starving ogre named Nish. It was so aggressive and giant that Ella and the elf were afraid. Because of the spell, Nish and the other orges successfully tied Ella on top of a big boiling pot. They also tied Slan into a tree. Just as the boiling pot will steam Ella, the running hooves of horses can be heard. It was Prince Char and his guards. Prince Char and his men defeated the ogres. The prince set free Ella and Slannon. Ella, for the first time, acknowledged the prince's presence. She also cleaned the wound on his arms. Ella bid her goodbyes as she told the prince that she was heading to Giantville. Prince Char offered that he and his men can accompany her for safety. The two sound like they are concerned for each other. Little did they know, Heston, the snake, was stalking them. After minutes of talking, Ella accepted Prince Charmont's offer to accompany them on their journey. On the way, they rode on the horse that walked parallel to each other. There, they get a chance to talk and the two discovered that they are both single. Slannon interrupts their moment, as he requests to petition the prince about his intention to be a lawyer. However, the prince told him that it is not his area of expertise so he better talk to his uncle. A little while, they saw giants working as slaves on a farm. They were maltreated and received punishment even for only a second of rest. Prince Charmont pitied their situation and promised to tell his uncle about their suffering. At that moment, Ella realized that Prince Charmon is different from the previous kings. It was already dim when Ella and Prince arrived at the Giantville where the wedding will be held. Her godmother Lucinda is also expected to attend the event. Seeing how enormous giants are, Prince Char felt nervous especially, since the giants may have been holding grudges against the royal family. A giant noticed the prince's presence and greeted him. To avoid commotion, Ella introduced the prince as someone from the kingdom who is willing to hear their complaints. Hearing that, the giant happily welcomed them. Ella didn't let a split second pass and immediately told the giant that she was looking for her godmother, Lucinda. The giant saw her earlier but Ella only found other fairies at the party. According to them, Lucinda already left the party an hour ago. Ella was also told by the fairy that Lucinda is now living somewhere in Lamia. Hearing that, Ella requested Benny to show Lucinda in the magic mirror of the book. There, Ella saw drunk Lucinda trying to fly normally. On the other hand, Prince Char eagerly listens to the giant as he expresses his complaints to the king regent. The prince promised that he will try to address those by telling them directly to his uncle. Ella interrupted them and told the prince that they need to go to Lamia to find Lucinda. It was currently in the middle of the night, so the prince suggested that it was better to stay at the party to spend the night. Despite her sad face, Ella enthusiastically agreed with the prince. Prince Charmont smiled looking at Ella and how she obeys him. Ella smiled and assured to the prince that she was okay with staying with him at the party. Heston the snake suspiciously observed the two who seems to love each other's company. At the giant's table, Ella and Prince Char sat while having a conversation. Ella opened up about her intention to search for Lucinda. The lady did not disclose anything about the spell. Instead, she reasoned out that she misses her godmother so much that's why she badly wants to find her. Prince Char immediately suggested that Ella should look for the Hall of Records, since a census is conducted yearly in the kingdom. The book is not open to the public but the prince promised that he will help Ella to have access to it. Ella was very much delighted that she immediately thanked Prince Char. While the two are having a conversation, Slan and the elf climbed to the table. He was being followed by the giants who keeps on requesting him to sing. It can be recalled that even if Slannon is an elf, he hates music and doesn't sing. Since the elf declined to entertain them, the giant pleaded with Ella to sing for them instead. Ella doesn't sing but was forced because she was told to. Ella sang and everyone liked it. It was so entertaining that they requested Ella to extend her performance. They also commanded her to dance, and Ella obeyed as usual. The prince was just looking at Ella feeling proud and amazed. Ella ended her performance by dancing with the prince. Prince Charmont held Ella's waist and guided her to dance. The two hugged tightly while dancing. After the performance, Slannon caught a lady giant's attention. The elf flirted with her and proudly shares that he is a great singer, even if he's obviously not. The night was getting cold, so Prince Char and Ella stayed near the chimney. The two talked about life and their mother's passing away early. Prince Char also talked about his uncle King Edgar, who tried to save his father and take care of him like his own. The prince also knew that Ella was mad at the king regent, 
because of what he did to the non-human creatures in the kingdom. Seeing their real situation, the prince promised to tell his uncle about their complaints. Apart from that, he also plans to lift the elfin restriction so that Slannon can proceed with taking law courses. Ella couldn't control herself and went near to the prince. She expressed her admiration for the prince's good heart. Ella also complimented him as a great king someday. Prince Charmont feel flattered and requested Ella for a kiss. The lady smiled and passionately kissed Prince Char. The next day, Prince Char and Ella arrived at Lamia. Meanwhile, at home, Alga was preparing herself for the incoming coronation ball. A little while, Guardian Fairy and Alga were shocked to see Peter. He came back and searched for Ella. The two responded that she was already at the castle together with her stepsisters, Hattie and Olive. At the castle, Hattie, Olive, and other maidens were invited for the coronation ball orientation. They couldn't hold their emotion as they are excited to see Prince Char later at night. Meanwhile, Slannon tried to enter the gates of the castle, but the guards blocked him. The elf insists and told them that he's with the prince. However, the guards never believed him and Slannon was kicked out of the castle. While being toured, the maidens were all shocked when the door opened and Prince Char was standing behind them. He was with Ella. Other maidens screamed while Ella's stepsister stared at her with disgust. Just as the ladies are about to get near, the prince and Ella escaped them. In a room, Ella finally meets King Regent Edgar, Prince Char's uncle. The prince introduced Ella to the king and the snake, Heston. The king found Ella weird as she acts everything he says. After the two left, Edgar looked at Heston and told the snake that there is something odd with her. At the Hall of Records, Ella was given the privilege to scan the Book of the Census, hopeful that she'll find Lucinda's name there. Meanwhile, in Edgar's room, Prince Charmont told his uncle about the working condition of the giants and that they are open to negotiation. The king seems to not care and told the prince, that they only negotiate with the giants when it comes to vegetable deliveries. To stop the prince from talking about the giants, he promised him that they'll talk about that matter after the coronation. Just as his uncle was about to walk away, Prince Charmont revealed his plan to marry Ella. Curious about Ella, the king requested her stepsisters to be interviewed. There, the king promised that he'll give his nephew's hand for marriage if they will disclose to him Ella's secret. Madly fallen to the prince, Hattie revealed to Edgar that Ella obeys everything she's told to do. While Ella was at the House of Records, Edgar came in and confirmed Ella's obedient thingy. Minutes passed by and King Regent Edgar was right. Ella obeys everything she's told to do. Because of that discovery, Edgar uses Ella to initiate his plan of putting his nephew to eternal sleep, to finally own the entire kingdom. Lamia is supposed to be ruled by his brother, Prince Charmont's father, whom he also had put to eternal sleep. To succeed in his plan, Edgar instructed Ella that at midnight, she will take a dagger and plunge it into his heart and put him to eternal sleep. Ella shouts as she disagrees to execute the plan. However, Edgar already knew that Ella can be manipulated because of her obedience. Before the coronation, the king also instructed Ella to never tell anyone about his evil plan. Outside the palace, Ella tried to look for Lucinda since she couldn't be found in the census book. A fairy told her that she was already kicked out of the kingdom last week. Hopeless that she can find Lucinda to take back the spell. Ella wrote a letter to Prince Char to say her goodbyes without disclosing her reasons. Not being with the prince till midnight of the coronation ball will ensure his safety. While Ella was heading out away from the prince, she saw Slannon. She requested him to tie her in a tree and to get help from the elves, ogres, and giants to take Prince Char off the hands of his uncle Edgar. Slannon has no idea of what's going on, but still headed to the forest to get help from the non-human creatures. Coronation night came. All of the maidens around the world wore their best dresses to spend the night with Prince Char. Prince Charmont, on the other hand, sat in a chair feeling lonely knowing that Ella left him. Regardless, the prince still hopes that Ella will come to the event. While Hattie and Olive were talking, Prince Char interrupted and invited Hattie to dance. Meanwhile, at the field outside the castle where Ella was being tied, a glimmering light struck the surroundings and Lucinda appeared. Ella screamed to Lucinda to get her attention. Ella of Frel. The lady introduced herself, in case Lucinda doesn't recognize her anymore. There Lucinda recalled the gift of obedience she gave to her. Ella immediately requested her to take back the gift, but Lucinda released her instead from being chained. The fairy godmother also dressed Ella for the coronation ball to impress Ella with her magic capabilities. Ella hugged the tree to avoid going to the ball and Charmont. However, her body leads her to the castle because of the spell of obedience. At the castle, the prince and Hattie danced. The lady thought that he was attracted to her, but the prince only invited her to dance to ask for the information about her stepsister, Ella. Just after Hattie tried to flirt with the prince, Ella wearing an elegant white dress dashed to the ballroom. Ella tried to hold onto the nearest table to keep herself away from the prince. However, her body seems to magnet to Prince Charmont. The prince immediately grabbed the opportunity to ask Ella what she really feels towards him. Ella responded that she loves the prince but she isn't fit to be with him in the kingdom. King Edgar saw the two together and smiled, as he couldn't wait for the time anymore that he'll finally inherit the kingdom. This will only be possible if Ella successfully eliminates the heir to the throne, Prince Charmont. The prince was left confused by what Ella said. 
Regardless, he brought Ella to the Hall of Mirrors and confessed his love to the lady. Ella cries as she also feels the same but because of the spell. She is bound to put the prince to eternal sleep when the clock strikes at midnight. Edgar and Heston stared at the scene. A minute before midnight, Prince Char knelt down and asked Ella to marry him. Clock strikes at 12 and Ella was in tears and keeps on saying no. The prince couldn't understand the reason why Ella declined his proposal. Little did he know, Ella was carrying a dagger behind her. The lady continued to cry and the prince hugged her. Ella's body is positioned to plunge the prince into the heart. Ella trembled as she tries to not stab the love of her life. While crying, Ella remembered what her mom said. What's inside you is stronger than any spell. Ella looked at herself in the mirror confident that she is stronger than the spell that made her life miserable. Ella trembles and shouted to herself that she'll no longer be obedient. The prince saw Ella reflected in the mirror, positioned to eliminate him. The dagger fell from Ella's hands. Clock strikes midnight and Ella successfully fought the spell and prevented herself to eliminate Prince Char. Just after midnight, Edgar came in and was so disappointed that his nephew was still alive. He commanded his guards to arrest Ella, because she attempted to put the prince to eternal rest. Ella cried as she tries to plead with the guards to let her explain her side to the prince. Meanwhile, Edgar tried to brainwash the prince who desperately wants to hear the lady's explanation. Edgar told him that the non-human creatures in the forest are after the prince and they sent Ella to eliminate him. Prince Char looked confused trying to process what his uncle and Heston said. Edgar and Heston the snake assured the prince that they will take care of everything. On the same night, the two also thought of another plan on how to get rid of the prince. The next day, the elves, ogres, and giants are already at the castle's gate as how Slannon was instructed. There, they heard Benny screaming. He was already in the trash can when they found him. Benny immediately told the creatures that Ella seems to be in danger. Through the magic book, the non-human creatures saw Ella imprisoned by Edgar. The elves, ogres, and the giants have been holding a grudge against Edgar and his ruling of the kingdom. In full force, the three groups of creatures created a plan to save Ella. Through a carriage, they were able to enter the castle and released Ella. Ella immediately requested Benny to show in the magic mirror what Edgar is currently doing. In the book, they saw Edgar poisoning Prince Char's crown. Coronation starts but Ella and her friends were still running to stop it. Trumpets are heard and King Regent Edgar entered. The crowd cheers as Prince Char walks in front for the traditional crowning. The strong ogres punch the guards at the door. Meanwhile, Edgar and Heston couldn't stop enjoying the moment, as the crown with poison is about to be placed on the prince. Suddenly, the door opened and Ella shouted to drop the crown. Everyone at the event looked around and stared at Ella, all shocked and having no idea of what was going on. Edgar, on the other hand, ordered his guards to capture Ella and her friends. As the guards are about to arrest them, ogres fought back as well as the giants. Since the palace guards were all defeated, Heston pulled the alarm for the red guards to control the commotion. Men in red suits were ordered by Edgar to eliminate anyone who gets in their way. Ella keeps calling Char for help. Red guards were heading towards Ella. The prince couldn't let Ella hurt, so he rushed to her with a sword. While Ella and the prince are fighting the red guards, they also quarreled about the incident that took place at midnight. The prince insisted that Ella was really trying to put him to eternal sleep. Ella, on the other hand, told him that it was Edgar who wants to get rid of him. Meanwhile, Benny who stayed in the book finally transformed into a man through the help of her girlfriend, Mandy. Delighted that he's finally a human, Benny helped in fighting back against the red guards of Edgar. After telling the prince the truth, Ella also revealed to him that Edgar was also responsible for his father's death. Prince Charmont was confused if he'll believe Ella. Seeing that there's no other way to eliminate the prince, Heston opened his venomous mouth to bite the prince. However, Ella saw him and kicked him away from Char. There, the prince concluded that even Heston, his uncle Snake tried to eliminate him behind his back. After knowing the truth, Prince Char's face turned red and was so angry with Edgar. Desperate to rule the kingdom, Edgar grabbed the crown and wore it. It was too late when he remembered that he applied poison around it. Greedy Edgar immediately died on the scene. The same month, Prince Charmont got married to his true love, Ella. The couple is bound to rule the kingdom of Lamia where the elves, ogres, and giants live harmoniously with the humans. And in the end, they lived happily ever after.